Offense for the Ducks tonight has pretty much been all LJ Mazzilli. Two homers, four RBIs, two runs scored. Out of the four runs and five hits Long Island has in this ball game. Frias and Lombardozzi as well as Turbo each have a base hit as well. Lombardozzi and Kelly each have a walk. But other than that, that has been it. First pitch to Shaw, grounded to the right side. Olmo Rosario will field. He throws over to Espinal at first. One pitch and one out. That's the cool now at 87 pitches on the night. Shaw 0 for 3 in this game with a fly out, a strikeout, and now a ground out. There is a defensive change for Charleston. Reimer Liriano has gone out into left field, taking over for Dario Pisano. So Pisano's night is done after five innings. Sal Giardina down to the plate. First pitch is taken low on an off-speed pitch, 1-0. So it's now Liriano in left, Kelly in center, and Paredes around in right. 1-0, lifted in the air to left center, racing over is Scott Kelly to his right, and on the run, he'll make the catch. So on two pitches, Sal Giardina is retired for the third time tonight. Two ground outs and a flyout. And just three pitches for Sakula here in the sixth inning. He has recorded two quick outs. Again, the top three in the order for the Ducks tonight have combined to have four hits and a total of eight at-bats in this game, nine plate appearances. But the rest of the Ducks lineup has just one hit and one walk and 15 plate appearances, 14 at-bats. So it's been lopsided in the Ducks lineup tonight in terms of the offensive production. Sakula winds and fires the first pitch to Ty Kelly, who swings in. It's a sharp ground ball, diving attempt, knocked down at first by Espinal. The throw to first, and they beat Kelly by a step. Great play by Edwin Espinal to knock it down and get the out at first. And a good job by Eric Sakula to cover. So just four pitches seen by the Ducks offense in the sixth inning. Two ground out sandwich around a fly out, and the Ducks go in order. We go to the bottom half of the sixth inning, 5-4, Charleston leads it. Hey fans, this is Brady Dragmeyer, and you're listening to the Ducks Baseball on the Long Island Ducks Broadcast Network. This is it. Check it out. I see what everyone's talking about. Let Nicola Paver, let Nicola Paver. Bring your outdoor living dreams to life. Visit Nikolox Outdoor Design Center at 200 Henry Street in Lindenhurst and see thousands of square feet of pavers, retaining walls, fire pits, and outdoor living accents on display. Only Nikolox paving stones are made with paver shield technology for more vibrant color options than anyone else. Visit Nikolox.com to request a free sample or their outdoor design center at 200 Henry Street in Lindenhurst. Nikolox. Ask for it by name. You'll see the difference. Visit Nikolok.com. That's Nicolak.com. Let Nicolak favor, let Nicolak favor. Pave your way. Pave your way. We head to the bottom half of the sixth inning here in Charleston, West Virginia. It is still a 5-4 lead for the Dirty Birds. Members of the University of Charleston on what is UC night. Running from right to left across the field here tonight. Carrying flags from different countries. I believe they were sitting between innings. There are 48 different countries represented by the student body at the University of Charleston. And so certainly... A sigh of relief for Long Island with the way Joe Iorio has pitched this season, especially of late. He's now won four in a row. Check that five in a row, actually, for Iorio. First pitch breaking ball misses down and in for ball one. Johnny Turbo is the batter. The nine hitter for the Ducks, batting from the right side. His first at bat of the night. 1 0. 
That's ripped on the ground towards short, but it'll be gobbled up by Connor Kopak. And his throw to first beats Turbo by a step for out number one. Sounded like Turbo might have broken his bat actually on that ground ball. So that is now six in a row retired by Eric Sakula since the LJ Mazzilli two run home run in the first. Back to the top of the order we go. Uh, that'll bring up Vladimir Frias to the plate. So the Ducks begin their second trip through the batting order as Vladimir Frias comes up to the plate for the second time tonight. He popped out to third in his first at bat of the ball game. First pitch from Sakula. And the breaking ball is taken on the outside corner for a strike, nothing and one. Frias yesterday was 0 for 4 at the plate, though he did draw a walk. Takes outside here. And that'll even up the count at one ball and one strike. Frias had a great day on Tuesday. Seven RBIs combined in the two games of the doubleheader for Long Island. And three hits between the two games after getting three hits at 14 at-bats down in Gastonia over the weekend. 1-1 takes a breaking ball up by the letters for a strike. And Sakula gets ahead in the count at one and two. From the windup, here's the pitch. Freya swings. It's a ground ball to the right side of the infield. Edwin Espinal has it go in and out of his glove, trying to field it on the backhand. And safe at first is going to be Vladimir Frias. Well, Espinal had a range a long way to his right to try and get it. The second baseman, Olmo Rosario, was coming to his left, but went behind him because Espinal made the call for it. And Espinal ultimately could not come up with the play. So safe at first is going to be Frias. We'll see how they score it. One on, one out. And up will step the second baseman, Steve Lombardozzi. It's going to go down as an infield single for Frias. So for the Ducks, their third hit of the ball game. And again, a very difficult play for Espinal, ranging in the hole to his right. First pitch here to Lombardozzi. Bunts up the third baseline. It goes foul. So Lombardozzi looking like he's trying to bunt for a hit there. That's obviously one out in the inning. So no reason for him to try and sacrifice the runner over. But Kayaspo was playing a little bit further back at third base and not a chance to try and lay one down and beat it out for a single. Lombardozzi doubled off the wall and right back in the first and then scored on the Mazzilli homer. Throw over and Frias back safely. Frias with 16 stolen bases in 19 attempts this year. Sakula hunched over as he gets the sign. Here comes the 0-1. Sakula kicks and fires. Lombardozzi takes. The breaking ball misses up and away. And that'll even up the count at one and one. Lombardozzi one for three with a run scored and two walks yesterday. The one hit a single. Put on base three times and five trips to the plate. One one fastball. This one misses outside. And so the count now with Lombardozzi's favor at two and one. Lombardozzi only had one hit in the two games of the doubleheader. Drove in a run as well with a sack fly. 2-1. Off-speed pitch. Tails away. Sakula tried to paint the outside corner, but could not get a piece of the black. And so now Lombardozzi with a good hitter's count at 3-1. And and we'll see if they put Frias in motion here on a hit and run. Espinal holds him on at first. Sakula set. The 3-1. There goes the runner. Lombardozzi takes a strike, and the throw to second is not in time. So Vladimir Frias gets down to second base with a steal. His 17th stolen base of the year. And Lombardozzi now with a count full of three and two. It was a close pitch, but caught a bit of the strike zone. So Lombardozzi now with a count full. The Ducks have the go-ahead run in scoring position with one away. It'll be a 3-2 pitch coming up here with one out. Sakula looks to second. Deals to the plate. Frias bluffs. And Lombardozzi takes outside for ball four. So Lombardozzi is aboard for the second time in this game. The first walk given up by Sakula tonight. And it's another First National Bank of LI walk to first. Go first. Go far. 
So the second time in this game, the Ducks have had back-to-back -back base runners with one out. They did that as well in the first with the Lombardozzi double and Mazzilli homer. And now here is LJ Mazzilli for his second at bat of the night with good speed on the bases, Frias at second and Lombardozzi at first. Sakula's first pitch. And Mazzilli takes the fastball outside, 1-0. Mazzilli's home run is ninth of the year, up to now 65 RBIs on the season. Here comes the 1-0. Mazzilli hits a high fly ball in the air to right. Drifting in on it, Jimmy Paredes, and he will make the catch. Neither runner able to advance. Freya stays at second, and Lombardozzi at first. So Mazzilli retired for the second out of the inning. Uh, with two men out, that's going to leave it up to Davidson Romero. Sakula has faced the Ducks twice previously this year, once on Long Island and once here in West Virginia. And has one win and one loss against the Ducks. His win came on this field June 2nd. When he tossed six innings of one run ball, allowed four hits and two walks while striking out five. That was his second start of the year. He also started the opening game of the season for Charleston to begin their Atlantic League era. Took the loss on opening day, allowing five runs in five innings against Southern Maryland. Romero swings first pitch, pops it up foul, first base side of the plate. And that's going to be back in the crowd with several fans running out of the way of it. Nobody really made an attempt to catch that foul ball. Several ran out of the way. So the count is nothing and one. Romero, a strikeout victim his first time up as he went down swinging in the first. One of three strikeouts in the ball game for Sakula. A one. Romero pops it up foul again. Behind the plate, Arcia sheds the mask. And on the warning track, he's going to make the catch for the final out of the inning. So the Ducks threaten with one out, getting a walk and a single. But ultimately, they leave both runners on base. No runs, a hit, a walk, and two left. We go to the bottom of the third, still tied at two. Hey, fan, this is catcher Hector Sanchez, and you are listening to Dog Baseball on the Long Island Dogs Broadcast Network. When we see Long Island, we see you. Because at Catholic Health, we know that it's your remarkable lives that breathe life into our island. So at every Catholic Health hospital, practice, and care facility, we're able to provide the highest quality, most innovative care for your body. Because our culture cherishes your humanity. Long live Long Island. Take your group out to the game this season and enjoy all the fun of Ducks baseball at discounted prices with the picnic area, luxury suites, party deck, and so much more. Bringing your group to the game will be an unforgettable experience. The Ducks even offer opportunities to sing the national anthem, serve as the Ridgewood Savings Bank color guard, be the Nicolock Dream Team, or put on a pregame performance. To book your outing today, call 631-940-3825 and ask for the group sales department. Long Island Ducks baseball. Good times every time. Bottom half of the third inning coming up here in West Virginia. The Ducks and the Dirty Birds tied at two. Long Island returns home tomorrow for the opener of Atula and drills it over the left field fence to drive home himself and Lombardosi. Uh, so the Ducks with their second home run of the series have an early two to nothing advantage. So Mazzilli with his ninth home run, RBI 64 and 65 on the season. Also scores his 71st run while Lombardosi picks up his 92nd run of the year. First pitch, and Davidson Romero 
takes it for ball number one. For the Ducks, that is home run number 111 on the season. Slider strike outside corner one and one. And if the Ducks hit 100 home runs this year, which obviously they have, they have met the Chappie's home run challenge. And Chappie's funeral home will donate $5,000 to the Quacker Jack Foundation. 1 1, cut on and missed. Hanging off speed pitch there over the outer half of the plate. Romero tried to deposit it over the left field fence again. Well, this one swung on and missed. And the count 1 and 2. Time called by Romero as Rod Blackstone, the toast man, off to our left. Leads the fans in the chance to power up the toaster. 1 2. Popped in the air foul. That's back behind the plate. And we'll do it again at one and two. Bases empty, one out. The Ducks with an early two to nothing lead. Romero takes the fastball down and in here. And so that will even up the count at two balls and two strikes. Sakula works out of the stretch, now winds back and fires to the plate. And it's fouled over the screen, straight back upstairs behind home plate. There are no suites upstairs behind the plate. There's a little curved roof that is over the press box here, which sits at the top of the seating bowl, which features about 10 or so rows of seats behind home plate. A couple more on the first and third base side of the press box. 2-2, two -two, slider, misses outside. And it's 3-2 and two on Romero with 10 homers and 44 RBIs on the year for Romero. Trying to pick up the Ducks' third straight hit with one out off Sakulo. Payoff pitch, and he swings and misses, strike three. Got a change up, up and in. And Romero goes down swinging, first strike out of the night for Sakula. And there are two away. So the toast man tosses his first pieces of toast to the fans sitting in the crowd here behind home plate. It has been a custom going all the way back to the previous home of this baseball franchise at Charleston, Watt Powell Park. So a two down in the base is empty. Chris Shaw is going to come up to the plate, batting from the left side. First pitch, breaking ball, take it for a strike, nothing at one. I had said before that Eric Sakula is a local product. Well, he was not born here in West Virginia, but grew up here. Pitch misses outside, one and one on Shaw. Sakula went to Hurricane High School in Hurricane, West Virginia, and then to Marshall University in Huntington, West Virginia. One, one. And this pitch on the outside corner for strike two. You never previously played with the West Virginia Power, but returns here to his home state in 2021. Pitch misses downstairs to even up the count at two and two, blocked behind the plate by Arcia. Shaw's hitting 230 this year, two homers, 10 RBIs since joining the Ducks. Sakula so looks in for the sign from Arcia, now has the pitch he likes. A 2 2. Grounded foul along the first baseline off the front of the Charleston dugout. So we'll do it once again at two balls and two strikes. Big game for both of these teams here tonight. 2-2. Two -two. The center over a couple steps to his right, Scott Kelly. Winds it up, makes the catch, and that will retire the side. So Sakula bounces back after the homer and retires two. But the Ducks take an early lead. Two runs on two hits, including the two-run home run left by LJ Mazzilli. No errors, nobody left. We go to the bottom of the first. It's the Ducks two and the Dirty Birds coming up to bat. Hey, fans. This is infielder LJ Mazzilli, and you're listening to Ducks Baseball on the Long Island Ducks Broadcast Network. That one in the air. Deep right field. And that ball is gone! Hitting third at third base is Alberto Cayaspo. And in the cleanup spot for Charleston is their right fielder, Jimmy Paredes. Batting fifth at first base, Edwin Espinal. The sixth hitter is the left fielder, Dario Pisano. Batting seventh and at second base, Olmo Rosario. The eight hitter is the catcher, Francisco Arcia. 
and rounding out the order at shortstop, Connor Kopak. On the mound tonight for the Ducks will be right-handed pitcher Scott Harkin, who makes his ninth start in a Ducks uniform. He has been great thus far with Long Island. 5-0 record, a 2.84 ERA, and 28 strikeouts to 12 walks over 44 and a third innings. So a good matchup of right-handers on the mound tonight for the final game of this series. Last time these two teams will meet in the regular season, but the way both have played this year, especially Charleston in the second half, this very well could be a preview of the Atlantic League Championship Series. So Eric Sakula steps up onto the mound for Charleston. And stepping up to the plate is Vladimir Frias for Long Island. He decided to stay home. Frias is switch hitting shortstop. First pitch of the ball game on the way. It is taken for a called strike. And we are underway at 7.07 p.m. here in the capital of the state of West Virginia. 0-1. That fastball misses upstairs. And evens the count at one ball and one strike. Clear skies overhead. Just a couple of thin clouds off in the distance. Another beautiful night. It is cool, though. The temperatures in the upper 60s and going to be dipping lower as the game goes on. A late timeout call asked for and granted. Fallout of Vladimir Frias asked for it. Greg Lodge, the home plate umpire, granted it late. Sakula's 1 1. Off speed pitch misses outside. And that'll run the count to two balls and one strike on Frias, hitting 289 this year with eight home runs and 54 runs batted in. 2 1. Fouled in the air, third base side, a towering pop up. That'll. So that'll leave up the count. Uh, two balls and two strikes. Ducks are in their road gray uniforms this evening with the Long Island and script on the front. For the first time ever, Charleston wearing their alternates. It's changing the name to Dirty Birds. 2-2. Two -two. Fastball runs outside. 3-2 and two now on Frias. And we'll describe the jerseys for you that they're wearing here in a moment. Sakula winds the payoff pitch, and Freya swings and pops it up. In the air to the left side of the infield. Back onto the outfield, Grasco goes Kayaspo, and the third baseman makes the catch to retire Freas for out number one. Well, again, if you're just joining us for the first time this week, this franchise, which had been known as the West Virginia Power ever since 2005 when they opened this ballpark, changing its name to the Charleston Dirty Birds, and it's a reference to the coal miner, coal miner Canaries, which were employed by the coal miners here in West Virginia to go down into the mining tunnels to make sure that it was safe for the miners to go down into them and that there wasn't a presence of any methane gas. First pitch here is a strike, nothing in one, and if the Canaries did not make it out alive, that would indicate that the tunnels were not safe. A one, and that misses down and in, one and one on Lombardozzi. Well, the main logo that the Dirty Birds have is a canary with a somewhat angry face wearing a coal miner's hard hat. Lombardozzi takes a strike on the outside corner, one and two. On the front of the hat is a headlight with the letter C wrapped around it, representing Charleston. Sakula's one, two, and Lombardozzi drills it deep in the air down the right field line, looking up at the wall, and it's off the wall. Paredes will field and fire it back in and in safely at second base with a one-out double is Steve Lombardozzi. Didn't miss it by much. It's only 220 feet to the wall and right here at Appalachian Power Park and that hit about halfway up the wall down the right field line. So Lombardozzi with his 24th double of the season and the Ducks have their first hit of the night. Hey guys. So that'll bring a bell, Jay Mazzilli. So these uniforms, unlike the white uniforms they wore the last two nights, these are canary yellow, which feature the West Virginia mountains across the abdomen of the jersey, the chest and abdomen of the jersey with the canary logo on the left chest and coal mining rocks on the bottom.